If you've been a subscriber for a bit, you're already familiar with this 8.1 Vortec and Allison transmission that I'm swapping into my square body crew cab. So far in this series, I've been using this frame to mock up the engine and transmission and to sort out all the fitment issues before pulling the truck off the road. This video was brought to you by Dual Fuel Corn Liquor, the only corn liquor label to have a proof mark and an octane rating. May call temporary or permanent blindness. Another thanks to Dual Fuel Corn Liquor. Thanks, guys. And we're back. In this video, you'll watch as I sort out which power steering pump I use and which power steering pulley I ultimately use. So follow along. <laughs> We have the power steering pump mounted to the bracket now, and we've started putting it on the one stud here. Uh, and then I've realized can't get this bolt to line up to that hole. Um, I was expecting the pressure side uh, output from the pump to be in the way, and it might be. We're going to try to put a 90 on it facing the back. Um, the other input. Um, does not clear the bottom part of the C channel part of the frame. I'm willing to do a little bit of notching. I don't want to do a lot of cutting on the frame. And then the next part, we're looking at this pulley. Um, looks like we'd have to notch the frame right here. So notch at the bottom, back here, way back here, and a notch at the top. We might just be able to get these to clear. I don't know what other people have had to do to make these parts fit uh, with an 8.1 on a square body frame. And the biggest problem is the 8.1 was originally fitted into a frame that was much wider width. Uh, the ra rails were further apart. And so this frame being a two wheel drive uh, square body frame is very narrow width here. Um, it does bolt up in place of a big block as far as the engine mounts go but we're having problems with the accessories so that's something i am trying to solve right now before i try to go put this all in my truck so that's what we're doing here right that's what you guys are following along for i think i'm going to throw in the towel on using this bracket um i've seen a youtube video where somebody used i believe it was a pickup truck version of this bracket and they were having fitment issues as well and made one basically from send cut send where they had two or three plates cut uh, to about both I think the AC bracket as well as the power steering uh, what I have is for the big trucks like the Kodiaks uh, and the, the box trucks the uh, brown ones are white, white trucks so what I'm going to do is going to figure out all the bolt pattern between the head and the block. We're going to emulate that and then we're going to also make a plate or plate system for the AC compressor which I still want to be able to use and then we're going to move uh, we're going to move this power steering pump closer to the crank away from the frame rail it might go up just a little bit as well because we seem to have some room to play there um, in fact what I'm gonna probably wind up doing is scrapping this ZF pump and going to a Saginaw pump uh, because I have a Saginaw pump already on my motor and I, um, I'd rather just be able to buy factory parts that fit my truck with that Saginaw pump 
and just bolt that saginaw pump to my new bracket and still be able to bolt on a AC compressor eventually. Yeah, it looks like we're going to do a send cut send project, guys. Um, so this just turned into, uh, instead of me cutting up the frame, I'm going to do a send cut send, make a whole new bracket that will hold my future AC compressor as well as my uh, Saginaw power steering pump. So instead of having custom stuff made for that ZF pump, um, I get to send that away to somebody else that, that might need it on eBay, um, as well as this bracket, uh, because this frame just is not going to be compatible with this bracket. So that's where we're at. We're going to be doing a send cut send uh, bracket. In a previous short form video, I had mistakenly determined that the popular Saginaw pump did not fit this included bracket. This led me to believe that I had to use the included ZF pump. I'm now discovering that the three bolt pattern does match three of the bolt holes in the Saginaw pump. Using an extra long bolt, I can now see that we have a clearance issue keeping the pump from resting in its proper position. Here you can see contact at the filler neck and at the reservoir flange. Looks like everything has to come back off. We'll get in here with a grinder and make a little bit of clearance so this pump will sit all the way flush against the front of this bracket. Here from the back of the bracket, you can see the reservoir flange contacting the bolt boss of the bracket and the filler neck needing clearance at this flange. Cue the music montage of the clearances being made. steering pump in the bracket for another test fit. It's starting to clear here at the uh, filler neck and still touching just ever so slightly here at the bolt boss with just a little bit more clearancing to go. Um, determined that instead of mocking up with that other pump, we're going to go ahead and uh, clean this pump up. Uh, this pump is dirty but does not appear to have any leaks, so we're going to take the pulley off, uh, unmount it from this bracket, clean it all up, uh, maybe hit it with some rattle can paint to make it match the other accessories and stuff on my motor, and uh, we'll go ahead and get this mounted up to that bracket as soon as that paint is dry and this paint is dry. So, uh, don't know how much of this I'm going to paint, we'll see what it looks like when it gets all cleaned up. So, here we go for you. that button presses there and allows some spin. This is the puller that will actually crank these two together to, to make movement. And this is the collar that actually grabs the components. So that side of there, drop that on there, start spinning these things together. Grab some wrenches or crescents or something. What is on there? 
I'm gonna go grab something with more torque here. I didn't say what was gonna have more torque, did I? This should, should make short work of that. I know, I'm a bad boy, chrome sockets. bolt holding that full pump to that bracket right now. Somewhere along the way they uh, apparently lost a few. Uh, just like with the drill bits, it's always advantageous to put things back in their case as soon as you're done using them. Uh, take that bolt out uh, and then get this pump good and clean and maybe paint it and that will be where we conclude tonight's episode. All right, what we've got here, um, I cleaned up a different pump, painted it uh, with some nice enamel paint. Uh, everything's had a chance to dry. I've touched up all the paint that got tore up here. Uh, we're gonna bolt these two together, put the uh, front pulley on, and I'm gonna test it, test fit this back into the uh, front of the motor there. Uh, in fact, we might just go ahead and bolt this up, test fit it again, and then go ahead and put the pulley on last, uh, just to see how it all goes together. So here we are. We'll put it together. fitting this uh, power steering pump and bracket assembly onto the front of the motor and inside the frame. And hoses are fighting me a little bit and we're still trying to work it onto that stud. Everything else is just bolts that we'll put in place later. Fighting it, fighting it, trying to wiggle it onto that stud. I grab the hoses and a little wiggle and bend the steel line a little bit and she's on there. Commenting, I need a wrench and a crescent. Uh, fully installer tool is, is in position. Slight problem, but I know how to fix it. 
Uh, that pulley is just a hair forward of the crank pulley. See from this angle, you can kind of see that. I got the top one lined up where I wanted it with the spacers and stuff. And what I'm going to have to do, that pulley is bottomed out on the pump as far as it gets, as far as it could be installed onto the snout of that pump. So what we're going to have to do is actually add spaces, be, spacers between the pump and the bracket. So we'll probably just wind up with a washer or two washers each. Uh, actually anything larger than an eighth I believe I can buy spacers that are in a calculated thickness. So back to the hardware store I guess. We're going to be pulling this pulley back off. See the uh, installer tool there. That's what I was just using. Back off. Turn into the Tin Man with all this. Reach for fresh rags. Try not to look like the Tin Man here. So, I just had this pulley on the power steering pump. Determined it was probably a full rib of the uh, serpentine belt off, uh, offset towards the front. It needs to go to the back a little bit more. It was bottomed out against the, uh, the nose, or as far as it would go onto the nose of the uh, power steering pump that's over there. And I've got two of these pulleys here. You can see the face of them is very different. And what I'm more concerned about is the back offset. Uh, offset with the yard stick. 1.14 inches and then we're going to offset again counting the yardstick just to give a point of reference .917 so .92 versus 1.1 or 1.15 um, you can also see it's about a rib difference in offset. I'm just sitting here with the nose. They both have about the same nose here. This point, this is where you pull or push. So yeah, it's about a V. A whole V belt groove off. Uh, I'm gonna give that one a shot. Uh, I'd rather be able to use uh, some form of factory part versus trying to put spacers between my bracket and the power steering pump, which uh, previously I had done for the ZF pump. So that's what these big chrome spacers are. Those are half inch thick spacers. Uh, I believe that would be too much in this case. I'm thinking we're gonna go with that one. In worst case, we might have a single washer installed as a spacer. So let's give this a go. We'll install that, and if I like it, then we're good. If we, we're just a hair off, we could go with the washer. Um, if I have to get any sort of washers or spacers added, I'm probably going to have to go to a hardware store and buy longer bolts. So, here we go. This is the part of the video where I say please like, subscribe, and share, which I just said. If you learned something from these videos or would like to learn something from a future video, please put it in the comment section below. If I've made any sort of critical filming errors with lighting or sound, please let me know. I'll work on that in the future. And as usual, binge watch the rest of my videos. And uh, don't forget to wrench every day. Y'all behave. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. At a later time and date, we'll actually add an AC compressor. This is actually uh, to just get us a belt on here that will drive our alternator that's over there and our power steering that's over there. Uh, so this is just going to be a block off to to, to substitute for AC that's not currently installed.